الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رحمة للعالمين ومن تبع دينه بالإحسان إلى يوم الدين الحمد لله we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa taala and asking him to send his peace and blessings upon the final prophet Muhammad and all those who follow his way with righteousness until the last day I would like to begin by asking a question. And this question is directed to each and every one of us who has made it our objective to study Islam. And the question is, why do you want to study Islam? And what do you want to do with that knowledge? This is a very important question because there are many people who look at studying Islam and seeking Islamic knowledge as an ibadah in itself for which you don't need a higher intention. And so we will have people studying Islam for no other reason except to become a scholar or to say that they know Islam. But they have no higher goals on what they want to do with this knowledge. So the question you need to ask is number one, why am I studying Islam? Am I doing it for the sake of Allah or for my own ego or to please my parents? What is the reason why I have chosen to study Islam. The second thing is how will other people benefit from me studying Islam? How will other people benefit from my knowledge? This is a question every Muslim should ask themselves who has studied Islam. The reason being is that Islam is not something selfish. Islam is a religion where Allah has given us social responsibilities. We have been created to serve mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Kuntum khayru ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You are the best of people brought forth for mankind. Interesting use of the preposition in the Arabic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says linnas and not minnas. Linnas means for mankind, for the benefit of mankind. Meaning Allah has created Muslims to be of benefit to others to guide others to the straight path, to make this world better. And so this is our responsibility, that we need to work together to bring people towards the truth. And so we shouldn't just go into the study of Islam without any uh, higher objective. We need to set some goals and we need to work towards learning knowledge and using that knowledge to bring people towards Allah. There are many other hadiths and verses of the Quran which speak about our social responsibility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the Prophet sallallahu as being rahmatul lil alameen, a mercy to the universe. If he is a mercy to the universe, then those of us who are following his sunnah should also be a mercy to the universe. Furthermore, the Prophet sallallahu has mentioned, or it is reported that he has mentioned, that the best of you, are those who are most beneficial to others. nas nas. The best of humanity are those who are most beneficial to mankind, or whatever the Prophet has said with that regards. The point here being that we as Muslims need to be of benefit to others. And the Prophet had also mentioned that Allah will not show mercy on those who have, do not have mercy to others. All of these verses and hadith, hadith of the, uh, of the Prophet Wasallam and verses of the Quran, all of them point to one thing, that as Muslims, it is not enough just to study Islam and then to practice it yourself. This knowledge needs to be shared with others in different ways. If you had to look at some of the people studying Islam in different parts of the world today, I would say one of the major reasons why many of the students of knowledge end up not being beneficial to others is because of having the wrong intention. When I was studying in the institute, uh, if people would ask us why we were studying uh, Islam, the vast majority of students would say something like, so I can have a BA, or so I can be a sheikh, or so I can have knowledge of the deen. You know, it is always about themselves or about their parents. That my parents want me to become a sheikh. My parents want me to have knowledge of the deen. So there was no bigger picture. 
it was very limited in what they wanted to do with their knowledge. The result of this is that those people end up not being beneficial to others. Those people end up not being beneficial to others. So for example, if you had someone who, uh, let's look at the Hafiz, because it's very common amongst people who are memorizing the Quran. Generally, if you see somebody who is memorizing the Quran, many a times, if you had to ask them, why are you memorizing the Quran? They would reply, to become a Hafiz. That's, that's their goal, to become a Hafiz. And so such an individual, after they have memorized the Quran and become a Hafiz, the question is, now what? They've completed their goal. And so such an individual does not understand the Quran, they do not practice the Quran, and they don't have any intention of sharing it with others. So what was the point of that hips? What was the point of memorizing the Quran if there was nothing more that you were going to do with it? Similarly, we have people who study Islam on a broader perspective for the same reason, that I am studying to become a sheikh. And so when they graduate and people start calling them sheikh, the next step is, again, now what? They have no higher goals. They never thought beyond that. They never thought, what will I do after I complete my studies? They never thought, what can I do with my knowledge to benefit other people? It was simply that I'm studying for the sake of studying. And so the knowledge does not benefit them, nor does it benefit others. And it becomes a waste. It becomes a waste of the resources of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we look at the knowledge of Islam, we need to be clear that this knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with is not just a gift. It's not just something uh, which we own or something which we can do it as we like. Knowledge falls under the category of risk, of sustenance from Allah. Risk is anything that Allah has provided us with to help us to live comfortably in this world and to make it to the next world. And one of the things that Allah provides us with in this world is knowledge. And so our knowledge is actually a risk from Allah. And so we have to look at it at the same way that we look at other things that Allah has provided us with. For example, wealth, money. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given someone a lot of wealth, we know that it is not permissible for that individual to squander his wealth. Zakah is compulsory, charity and sadaqah is recommended, Serving the deen with the wealth is something which is, uh, you know, something which is beneficial, something which is uh, propagated by the religion. That a person who mises with his wealth is somebody who Allah has cursed in the Quran, Allah has spoken against in the Quran. And the same applies to knowledge. That somebody who mises with their knowledge and does not share it with others. There is a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said that those who conceal their knowledge who do not benefit other people with their knowledge, it will be put around their neck on the Day of Judgment. And it will be uh, turned into a bridle of fire that will burn their necks. So we ask Allah to protect us from that. So knowledge, ilm of this deen and even of this dunya is a sustenance from Allah. And just like anything else that Allah has provided us with, whether it be our wealth, for our health, or even our free time, we will be asked about our knowledge and what we did with it. The Prophet ﷺ had said that there are five things which will be asked about. You know, and those five things are your life, or your youth, your free time, your knowledge, and your wealth, how you earned it and spent it. All of these five things are risk. They are sustenance from Allah. They are things that Allah gives to some and does not give to others. And if it is given to you, it is your responsibility to share it with others. It is your responsibility to benefit others from it. And so, knowledge of the deen becomes something which we need to use to share and benefit with others. And so, now we will move on to the more uh, practical part of this uh, lecture. As I'm sure now everybody understands that sharing knowledge is our responsibility. It is something that we all have to do. So the next question which will come to many people's minds is, how? How do I share my knowledge? What can I do with my knowledge uh, to benefit others? And Alhamdulillah, we are living in a time where there are hundreds of things that you could do with your knowledge. 
No? The most basic thing you could do is share it with your family. So if you are a housewife, or if you are a father, or even if you are a son, uh, just still a son or daughter and not married yet, you have a responsibility and you have the ability to share this knowledge with others within your own household. Setting up a study circle in your house. Maybe once a week, you get your family together and teach them about Islam. You know, or maybe something you can do every day. You can make uh, different methods according to the lifestyle that you'll have and according to uh, the culture of your home and set up different ways to spread the knowledge within your home. Setting up Islamic libraries, downloading Islamic lectures, getting your other family members to sign up with the BA program. There are different ways to share knowledge even within your home. Outside your home, there are a variety of ways to do it. Getting involved with the local masjid and any Islamic projects which they have. Offering your services to teach people. Teaching is perhaps the most beneficial uh, way of using your knowledge. I know nowadays there is a trend that everybody is into and that trend is uh, lecturing on the public circuit. Now, everybody wants to become a public lecturer. You know, they put on uh, PCV or one of the other Islamic TV stations or they go on YouTube and they see Dr. Bilal Phillips and Dr. Zakir Naik and um, Yasser Qadi and the other great scholars all on the stage uh, talking about Islam in different countries of the world with thousands of people in the audience and the average student of knowledge says to themselves, I want to do that. I want to be like that. Interestingly, I was listening to an interview with Dr. Bilal uh, a few days ago and he mentioned in that interview that education and teaching is much better than traveling around the world and lecturing. He said because traveling around the world and lecturing has become a source of entertainment. Out of the thousands of people that attend the lecture, many of them just come there to be entertained, to say they had a good lecture. But when you are educating, when you are a teacher, you are training people to be the next generation of righteous Muslims. And so the benefit of teaching a group of people is a lot more uh, powerful than the benefits of giving a public lecture. And there are benefits in public lecturing as well, alhamdulillah. But if you have to weigh the two, teaching is on a higher level, even though many people do not realize this. So when we are looking for something to do with our knowledge, we should not be looking at what is most glamorous and what is what will make us the most famous, na'udhu That should not be the intention of somebody who is seeking to serve the deen. Rather, our intentions should be on what is most beneficial. And so teaching is something that you should consider. If you are studying Islam and you have some knowledge of Islam, consider setting up a class, whether it's once a week, whether it's uh, once, of, uh, once a month for three or four hours, whatever it is, setting up a class to teach other people what you have studied and to share your knowledge. Another thing which people do nowadays to share their knowledge, alhamdulillah, thanks to the internet, is setting up blogs, a blog or a website and writing online. That way you can share your knowledge in small doses. Even on YouTube with videos, we have people doing this nowadays. Uh, some of the more unique ideas that you could uh, use for sharing your knowledge, uh, things which are not done as often nowadays, uh, one is consulting, uh, becoming a consultant. Uh, this is something which many people might not be familiar with, but it's a growing field where you could use your Islamic knowledge to be a consultant. A consultant could be of different types. You could be a, a, a consultant to Muslim schools on improving their Islamic study syllabus or, or Islamizing the other subjects. You know, this is something new which can beneficial can be of benefit to people at the same time be a source of halal risk for you. Uh, a, a consultant to Muslim businesses um, to make sure that their income is halal by using what you have studied in the fiqh of business or a consultant to Islamic banks to make sure they actually are Islamic and not indulging in anything haram. This is another field you can go into to be a benefit to society. Similarly, counseling. You can become a counselor. Because we know in our communities, there is no shortage of problems among the Muslims. And there are many Muslims who are looking for somebody to talk to about their problems and somebody who can help them to solve their problems. And so you can use the knowledge that Allah has given you to counsel others. And if you do so, this counseling will uh, be your way of giving back to the community and 
delivering your responsibility of sharing your knowledge. You could set up new projects, you know, something according to your field. Maybe you are an IT expert, or maybe you are a doctor. Whatever field you are in, you can try and come up with a project where you can use your Islamic knowledge in that field. And this is something where there's a lot of room for creativity. It's really up to the individual to look at your situation and to see what can I do in my field to teach Islam and benefit Islam. I can give you a few practical examples. I know of a doctor who studied Islam. And Alhamdulillah, if you go to the doctor's surgery today, he has Islamic posters on the walls. He has Islamic pamphlets and flyers on the table. The non-Muslims who come to his surgery and wait uh, in line to be served, they sit and they read the pamphlets about Islam. And some of them, Alhamdulillah, have even converted to, to Islam. So, you know, he's a doctor, but he still found a way to incorporate his Islamic knowledge into that and to do dawah through his profession. You know, likewise, you could think of different things. There are many projects we can embark on today. With the advancements in technology and inventions of things like the iPhone and the Blackberry and the iPad and the Internet, each of these can be used for the dawah. It is up for us as individuals to look and see what I am best at and then to use that skill to contribute to serving Islam and spreading the knowledge of the deen. And of course, one other way that all of us can uh, contribute to sharing the knowledge of Islam is by informing as many people as possible about the Islamic Online University and getting as many people as possible to sign up for our BA program. Because when you get somebody to sign up for a BA program, you are, alhamdulillah and inshallah, you are being the one who is helping that person become a scholar of Islam. So just imagine if you got one person to sign up for the BA program. And that person was very sincere and very dynamic. And that person went on not just to complete their BA, but to get their master's and PhD and became one of the greatest scholars of our time. You will get the reward for every good deed that they do. You know, and this is far higher than just teaching somebody one subject. Here you are helping somebody to become a scholar of Islam. They might even become a higher and greater scholar than you and I. But we will share in their rewards for being their teachers and being those who inspire them. Now imagine if you get 10 people to do the BA program, or 20 people, or 100 people. The rewards become limitless. You know? This is why the scholars say that the greatest field that a person can get into is sharing Islamic knowledge and spreading Islamic knowledge. Because when you are spreading Islamic knowledge, the rewards have a domino effect. You can pass away, but the rewards will keep coming to you for centuries, depending on how much benefit you have left behind. And the Prophet has told us this. He says when we pass away, all our deeds stop except for three. Out of those three, one is the charity that people continue to benefit from. The another are your children and those who make dua for you. And the third is knowledge that people continue to benefit from. And that's where we are aiming to contribute towards in this field. When we study Islam, we want knowledge. Not knowledge to keep in ourselves, but knowledge to spread to the rest of the world. So that this will be a source of khair for us in the Akhirah and a source of khair for everybody in the dunya. Because when Islamic knowledge spreads into a community, it removes the problems of that community. Islamic knowledge helps to solve the drug problems. It helps to solve uh, the moral problems. It helps to solve social problems, marital problems, ch problems with raising your children. All of these are solved with the spread and implementation of correct Islamic knowledge. And so the least that each of us can do to help spread Islamic knowledge is to get as many people as possible to si sign up with the Islamic Online University or any other BA program, specifically Islamic Online University, as it is something which you can study from your home anywhere in the, in the world at a very affordable price. So that is why, you know, it is specifically recommended. And again, that should not be the only way. You should look for other methods in your life for spreading this knowledge, whether it is teaching your family, whether it is um, starting a new project, whether it is joining an Islamic organization, whatever it is, getting involved in dawah, public lecturing, whatever Allah has given you the skills to do. You know what skills Allah has given you, it is up to us as individuals to use these skills to serve the deen.
And so, I hope that with this uh, short reminder, I'm able to convince you all and myself that our knowledge is not something which we can boast about. It's not something which we have earned. It is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a gift which Allah had given the prophets. That the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said that the scholars, al-ulama, awarasatul anbiya, the scholars are those who inherit from the prophets. They do not inherit money. Yes, a scholar can get money. It is not as many people think that if you choose to be a scholar, you will be poor for life. No, Allah can bless you with money. If He wills and if you are sincere and if you will use that money for good, Allah can bless you with that. But the true blessing and inheritance which a scholar receives is knowledge. Because knowledge will benefit you and everybody who you meet in this world and in the next world. Anybody that you meet, if you are a true person of knowledge, that is, you know Islam, you practice Islam, you show Islam in your character and your dealings with others, and you teach Islam to others. If you do these four things, then your knowledge will benefit everybody you meet. And that benefit will be in both worlds. In this world, it will make living more comfortable for others. It will make life more pleasant, pleasant for others, for being around a righteous and merciful person. And in the afterlife, your guidance in helping others will inshallah assist them and yourself to getting a high place in Jannah. And so, I would like to conclude with a dua where we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide each and every one of us to have the correct intention at all times in our seeking of knowledge, in our implementation of it, and in our spreading of it. Because even in the spreading of knowledge, it is very easy for riya and showing off to creep in which is a minor form of shirk. We ask Allah to protect us all from riya and from all forms of shirk, that which we know and that which we are unaware of. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give each of us the correct understanding of Islam and to protect us from bid'ah. And we ask Allah to give us all the ability to practice what we have learned and to be able to share that with others. And we ask Allah to give us the opportunities to share this knowledge with others. Because sometimes people study Islam, but they do not have the opportunity to teach it to others. And they are cut off from such opportunities. So we ask Allah to give us many opportunities to share the deen with others and to make us a means of guidance for everybody that we know. So that when people look at us, they think about Allah. When people think of us, they think of Allah. And when people make dua, they make dua for us. But remember, there is a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned that for a person who is studying Islam, even the fish in the ocean make dua for him. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from such people who he has blessed with the knowledge, the true knowledge of the deen. Not the knowledge which is of no benefit, but the knowledge which is of benefit to us and everybody that we meet. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to use us always to serve the deen and to <coughs> raise us on the day of judgment with the anbiya and the ulama of all times, those who Allah had sent to serve the deen and to spread the knowledge. We ask Allah to raise us with them on the day of judgment and to grant us all genital for those. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.